When we picture ancient super sharks, Megalodon is often the first name that comes to mind. But its equally impressive cousin, Cosmopolitodus, tells a different story of predatory success. This shark was a master of speed, not size. With a sleek body and razor sharp, smooth teeth, the broad toothed Mako was an evolutionary marvel, a fast moving hunter that dominated the oceans for millions of years. Cosmopolitodus hastalis was one of the swiftest hunters of the Miocene. Its body shows the sleek profile of a predator tuned for high performance, a streamlined torpedo-like form closely resembling modern lamnids. This impression doesn't come from speculation alone. The rare, remarkably preserved skeletons from Peru, combined with its broad teeth and global fossil record, confirm a hydrodynamic design that would have allowed sudden bursts of speed. Moving through open water, it pursued prey that ranged widely in size from dense shoals of fish to agile marine mammals, a demand that shaped both its body plan and its bite. The teeth of Cosmopolitodus give a clear window into how it operated. Fossils reveal broad blade-like structures, with some specimens reaching up to three and a half inches, 8.9 centimeters in height. Unlike the serrated cutting tools of the Great White, these crowns were smooth, but massive capable of delivering puncturing forceful bites to thicker targets. Their size and shape suggest they were not specialized for tiny fish alone, but were versatile enough to drive into blubber and bone. This striking architecture helps explain how a predator with the build of a sprinter could also take on prey several times larger than itself. Supporting this picture are the records of physical interaction evidence written on the fossils of other animals. Dolphins remains from Miocene deposits bear gouges consistent with the jaws and tooth dimensions of Cosmopolitodus scars that suggest sudden strikes from below or behind. These marks are rarely clean kills. They signal attempts both successful and failed by a hunter capable of surprise and acceleration. In the same broad period, another remarkable line of evidence tells a different story. A skeleton from the Pisco Basin in Peru, preserved with sardines in its stomach. It is a rare snapshot of diet revealing that Cosmopolitodus, at least in juvenile form, did not rely solely on large dangerous prey. Put together, the picture is a dual strategy. The streamlined body provided the chase. The teeth provided the power. Bite mark records show adults were capable of engaging dolphins and small whales. The juvenile stomach contents instead point to fishing among schools of smaller energy, rich sardines. Juveniles appear to have relied on readily available shoaling fish, while adults at times pursued the caloric windfall of marine mammals. This evidence does not suggest contradiction, but adaptability, a predator flexible enough to balance efficiency with risk. That balance is echoed in comparisons to sharks alive today. Modern great whites target seals, but will just as readily consume schooling fish or carrion when opportunities arise. Mako sharks too show the same combination of speed with versatility in diet. Cosmopolitodus fits within this lineage of opportunistic predators, demonstrating how physical design and feeding behavior can both widen a niche and extend survival in shifting seas. It is this marriage of form and strategy that allowed the broad-toothed mako to flourish across much of the Miocene and Pliocene, securing a presence that lasted for millions of years. Yet within that long span, a single fossilized meal was preserved well enough to be recognized millions of years later. For researchers, it has become a keystone example, direct evidence of diet rarely granted by the fossil record. And it raises an intriguing question. What does such a brief frozen moment tell us about the life of a predator we thought we already knew? In Southern Peru, the Pisco Basin preserves one of the most surprising glimpses into the life of Cosmopolitodus hastalis. Among the scattered teeth that usually dominate the shark fossil record, a near complete skeleton was discovered an extraordinary find since sharks are built mostly of cartilage that rarely fossilizes. Even more remarkable inside the abdominal cavity of this specimen were the remains of its last meal. Instead of the expected chunks of marine mammal flesh or large fish preserved within its stomach were sardines. This single discovery has become one of the most direct pieces of evidence we have for the diet of this ancient super predator. At first, this seems counterintuitive. Cosmopolitodus could grow five to seven meters, 16 and a half to 23 feet long. So the idea of such a large animal relying on sardines feels almost too modest for a hunter of its scale. Yet the fossil shows that in the upwelling seas of the Miocene off Peru, sardines played a critical role. Cold, nutrient-rich currents supported vast schools of them, filling coastal waters with dense shoals. P. 
Pisco Basin fossils show sardines in the shark's stomach, indicating that sardines, not anchovies, were a major small fish resource in that region at the time. For a fast but energy-hungry predator, this abundance was too efficient to ignore. The logic is simple. Hunting dolphins or small whales demanded enormous bursts of energy and brought risks of injury, even if the payoff in calories was higher. Sardines, by contrast, moved in massive groups where a single strike could yield thousands of calories without prolonged struggle. Sardines provided a reliable low-cost food source between the riskier hunts for marine mammals and efficient survival strategy confirmed by the Pisco stomach contents. What makes this fossil especially valuable is how rare such evidence is. Shark skeletons almost never survive long enough to enter the fossil record intact, which is why most of what we know comes from shed teeth. To find a specimen in which the skeleton including stomach contents was preserved is extraordinary. Because shark skeletons are rarely preserved, this stomach content snapshot is unusually direct evidence of diet and fills a gap that tooth shape alone cannot. It moves dietary discussion from assumptions based on anatomy into the realm of direct proof. That is what elevates this find into a world-class specimen, an actual preserved record of what one predator ate in Miocene Peru. The presence of sardines also reveals an important aspect of shark behavior across different life stages. Many shark species show a clear division between juvenile and adult feeding preferences. Small young sharks often rely on abundant fish until their jaws and size allow them to pursue tougher prey. In Cosmopolitodus, the sardine evidence could represent this early stage where young individuals fed on dense schools minimizing risk while maximizing growth. Mature individuals would then take on larger targets such as dolphins and small whales, but the ability to switch between prey of different scales would have provided an adaptive edge across the lifespan. On a larger scale, sardines were more than a backup plan. They were the bedrock that supported the productivity of Peru's Miocene seas. For Cosmopolitodus, they likely functioned as the dependable fuel that kept a high-speed hunter active, even when larger prey was scarce. By leaning on a diet of small fish, when conditions demanded this species had the flexibility to occupy both coastal and offshore environments, it helps explain why this predator did not remain confined to South America, but appears again and again in global fossil deposits. From this one sardine-filled stomach, researchers gain more than a single meal history. They glimpse an ecological strategy that extended the shark's range and endurance, linking local abundance to global success. And as more teeth appear in rocks from Europe to Asia, the question becomes sharper. How did a shark that once patrolled Peru's coastal waters manage to carve such a vast presence across the ancient seas? From South America's Pacific coast to Mediterranean shores from East Asia to North America, the fossil record of Cosmopolitodus hastalis is widespread. Teeth and occasional partial skeletons appear in deposits of the Pisco Basin in Peru, across Italy and Malta in South Korea, and throughout coastal sediments of the United States. This pattern reveals more than simple survival. It shows a shark with a global presence able to occupy temperate and subtropical seas, nutrient-rich upwelling zones, and environments with less consistent productivity. Peru remains central to this story. The Pisco Basin was one of the most biologically productive regions of its time, driven by cold upwelling that flooded the surface with nutrients. These conditions supported dense swarms of sardines, huge gatherings of seabirds, and large populations of dolphins and small whales. For a broad-toothed mako, every tier of prey was available in one hunting arena. This explains why so many exceptionally preserved specimens appear there, including skeletons and stomach contents, and why Peru's waters functioned as a core habitat rather than a marginal one. Yet traces of the species show it was not confined to that coastline. Italian localities demonstrate their reach into Mediterranean waters, which were structurally different from the nutrient-rich Pacific. Fossil finds on Malta extend that record in the central Mediterranean. To the east, specimens from South Korea show it entered the Western Pacific as well. In North America, teeth are recovered from Atlantic and Gulf sites, including areas of Florida and North Carolina. Rather than isolated outposts, these discoveries illustrate how the species spread across multiple basins, adapting to local prey resources in each. The key to this flexibility lies in its teeth. Paleontologists recognize two main morphs, broad and narrow. 
The broad form, thicker and more flattened, appears better suited for tackling blubber-rich marine mammals. The narrow form, slimmer and sharper, likely reflects a heavier reliance on fish. These subtle differences across regions suggest local populations adjusted to the animals most available to them. In other words, morphology records their ecological flexibility as much as their feeding power. The broad-toothed morph especially carries evolutionary weight. Many researchers view it as the likely ancestral stage of the Carcharodon lineage, the serrated tooth great white shark. In this interpretation, Cosmopolitodus represented a transitional step from UN serrated mako-like teeth to the fully serrated dentition of modern white sharks. But this link is debated. Some specialists continue to classify the fossils within separate genera, arguing that the anatomical distinctions justify a different branch rather than direct ancestry. The disagreement highlights how even well-sampled sharks raise unresolved questions. Instead of a settled lineage, what emerges is an active area of study where every new find can sharpen or challenge the evolutionary picture. This uncertainty does not diminish the ecological reality. A shark with both broad and narrow tooth forms could exploit a wide range of prey and succeed wherever it dispersed. Sardine abundance anchored its presence in South American upwelling zones while small whales and fish schools sustained populations in other seas. The details may vary between coasts, but the underlying pattern is consistent adaptability supported distribution by using low risk prey when available and turning to higher risk hunts. When the reward justified it, it achieved one of the broadest ranges of any Miocene predator. The paradox comes from what follows. A shark capable of such range, adapted across hemispheres and resilient in its feeding, should have been secure against sudden decline. And yet the fossil record makes clear that its dominance ended. Global presence was not enough to guarantee survival. The question is why such a versatile predator, shaped by millions of years of success, eventually disappeared from the oceans altogether. That question leads directly into the forces that tested its endurance and determined the outcome of its struggle for survival. For nearly 30 million years, Cosmopolitodus hastalis prospered across the oceans, thriving on sardine shoals, dolphins and small whales. It combined global reach with speed power and a versatile diet traits that should have given it lasting security. Yet by the close of the Pliocene, around 2.6 million years ago, this broad-toothed mako disappeared. To explain its extinction, researchers focus on two main possibilities. One idea is simple competitive replacement by serrated tooth sharks that became the great white lineage. Another better supported in several recent studies points to global cooling and shifts in prey base that undercut Cosmopolitodus' food supply. Both factors present strong cases and the question is not which alone was responsible but how they may have worked together. The case for competition starts with teeth. Cosmopolitodus possessed broad, smooth-edged crowns suitable for piercing and holding, but not adapted for slicing. In contrast, the serrated teeth of early white sharks functioned like saw blades, especially effective for shearing through marine mammal flesh. The two sharks also shared a similar laminid body plan built for fast bursts of speed. At first glance, the match seems decisive, an older predator outperformed by its more specialized descendant. It is tempting to frame this as a direct handoff in evolutionary roles, yet the picture is less straightforward. Fossil evidence places Cosmopolitodus and early Great Whites in the same seas for over a million years, coexisting across overlapping ranges. If competition alone were sufficient, we would expect a sharper, more immediate disappearance. Instead, the extinction of Cosmopolitodus aligns with a larger environmental realignment by the late Pliocene global cooling intensified. Polar ice expanded, altering ocean circulation, shifting nutrient upwellings, and in many regions reducing the dense sardine schools that had once fueled Miocene ecosystems. For a predator that relied on both fish and marine mammals, this instability cut at the base of its survival. Recent zinc isotope studies provide independent support for this shift. Analyses of fossil teeth reveal changes in predator trophic levels over time, showing that laminid sharks adjusted their diets as prey availability altered. These patterns suggest increasing ecological overlap and diet shifts consistent with prey loss and restructuring of food webs. Cosmopolitodus, already pressured by diminished fish stocks, faced more direct overlap with serrated laminids in a landscape of shrinking resources. Climate cooling not only disrupted sardine abundance, but also reshaped the ranges of marine mammals. Dolphins and small whales adjusted migrations or declined in regions where food chains fractured. 
Cosmopolitanus' dual reliance on shoaling fish and cetaceans had once been a strength, yet as both became unreliable, the balance turned fragile. A predator built to exploit abundance now confronted scarcity. Even with the adaptability demonstrated across continents, its strategy faltered when ecological foundations shifted on multiple fronts at once. The most plausible explanation is a mix of long-term climate cooling driving prey shifts with rising competition from evolving lamnids amplifying the stress on cosmopolitodus populations. Serrated tooth sharks likely gained an advantage in waters where marine mammals remained central prey, while environmental instability dissolved the ecological networks that had sustained a broad toothed lineage for millions of years. No single cause can fully explain the extinction. Rather, it was the overlap of ecological pressure and environmental change that brought an end to this global hunter. In that end lies more than a tale of rivalry or shifting seas. It underscores how even the most formidable predators remain tied to the stability of their ecosystems. For Cosmopolitodus, strength and speed could not offset the collapse of the conditions that had once guaranteed its dominance. The forces that erased it from the seas speak to a broader truth about life's resilience and vulnerability, an idea that echoes far beyond the story of one vanished shark. Cosmopolitodus hastalis combined speed with flexibility, striking dolphins when conditions allowed and sweeping through sardine schools when efficiency mattered more. For millions of years, this balance sustained it across oceans, yet its survival always depended on stable ecosystems that could provide both prey and habitat. When cooling seas disrupted fish populations and altered marine food chains, its edge disappeared. Fossil teeth bite marks and even chemical traces now let us see how global change reshaped ancient oceans and their predators. If this blend of paleontology and ecology interests you, subscribe for more stories connecting past life to shifting environments.